she isn't feeling well, so she's on her way to the doctor today. So I hope she gets feeling better. Definitely. Um, I was gone last week. I was at Best Friends, and I have some animals that are buried at their cemetery up there. So usually in October, I go up there and, you know, just it's a beautiful time of year to be up there. It's not hot anymore. And and uh, it's beautiful scenery and I go to the cemetery and visit the kids and um and so that was where I was last week doing that and so also it was um day of the dead or we're in day of the dead but last week I had a friend who's a dog trainer and she always does Day of the Dog. So it's Day of the Dead for the dogs. And we celebrated that last Friday. And she had, um, you know, some vendors. I was one of them. She had some training obstacles set up and people could bring their dogs in costume. And then at the very end, there was an altar and everybody could bring pictures and there was candles or you could bring something that, you know, in remembrance. And they did a special little ceremony. So it was really, really nice and very touching. Um, here comes Marilyn. So we'll let her in. So that's what I've been up to. And I know last week was also, I think it was last week, Bat Week, right, Darlene? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I was watching some TV show and it was an old TV show, right? You know, some nutty show. And bats were coming in and like swarming, like they had rabies or something in this community. And they're all like, oh, they drink blood. So I'm like, you know, I wish Darlene was here because she could get this all squared away. So can you share a little bit about Bat Week? And uh, Bat Week is, I mean, October is actually Bat Appreciation Month, but Bat Week is more, you know, highlight of, of bats. You know, actually, you know, worldwide, there's uh, like 1,435 different species of bats. Uh, in uh, California, we have 25 different species of bats. Uh, and in Northern California alone, just within Sacramento area, we have about 14, which people don't realize. And it's like bats don't, Sorry. bats don't carry rabies. Uh, they don't spread it around. You know, if they get rabies, they will get sick and die from it. Usually within, you know, 10 to 12 days, just like a human does. Unfortunately with, for humans, you know, we can, you know, get a vaccine, you know, if we're, you know, if we've been bitten by a rabid dog or rabid bat, whatnot, we can be uh, vaccinated and, you know, have a good chance of living. There's usually only like one to two deaths per year in the whole United States from rabies. And that's because people don't get vaccinated for it. But uh, the, you know, bats don't get vaccinated. You know, if they're deemed to have rabies, then, I mean, obviously if they've had rabies, the only way to know is to take a sample of their brain tissue. And unfortunately to do that, you know, Ooh. you have to be euthanized to do that. So, right. um, but it's with the millions and millions of bats that are out there in the world, I mean, less than 1% of them actually have rabies. It's not that prevalent. It's just that, you know, if somebody gets bitten, it just makes it a big deal and it's like, you know, there, there's the people that are misinformed are the ones that are spreading the incorrect information. I had somebody I was at an event a couple weeks ago that they, you know, were, they said that they were taught in school that rat, rat, uh, bats were a carrier of all diseases, rabies and everything else, and that bats were to be feared and bats, you know, were gross and, you know, her dad you know, was constantly, you know, killing the bats in their barn because he said they were attacking their livestock and making the livestock sick, which was totally not even possible. You know, bats don't want to have anything to do with people. They're, yeah. The bats that we have in the United States are all insectivorous. You know, they're eating the bugs. You know, they save farmers billions of dollars every year. Uh, and, you know, 
insecticide and pesticide use. You know, it's like they're just so beneficial. But this this one woman, you know, after talking with her for a few minutes, you know, was able to, you know, sway her to the side where by the end of the conversation, you know, she was, you know, going to put up a bat house in her backyard. So, you know, it's that's, like. That's pretty cool. That's good work. I know I have. Yeah. There's a lot of bats that live, you know, come out of Red Rock Canyon, and I'm kind of east of that. And I have two that I see on a regular basis, not every night, but they come down the flood channel. And so I like to go out and wait for them and watch them zip around and get the bugs and yeah, they're so cool. They they don't want to have anything to do with people. The only reason that they would swoop down, you know, next to you or close to you is because you probably have some bugs around you. There's probably mosquitoes or moths that are flying around you, but they're not going to attack you. They don't want to get in your hair, like they say, and <laughs> you don't have the, you know, there's a couple different species of vampire bats uh, down in uh, South America, but uh, they're they're not really going to be attacking people. Uh, they're not going to fly into your house and and attack you. They're the one. They're going to mainly uh, you know be biting on cattle. Mm -hmm. and, and what happens? What they do is that they'll bite you know like on their ear or something like that. But what they do is they have uh, uh, like an anticoagulant so that when they bite into it, it it's like it doesn't uh, uh, stop the bleeding so that, you know, if they get, if they get several bites, you know, they could potentially bleed to death. But I mean, it's, it, it's over a long process. So cattle farmers are, are watching their, their herds anyway down there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not that prevalent. And, mm -hmm. So, and, I mean, there's so many different sizes of bats. So our bats are all pretty small here, but uh, the largest bat is the Malaysian flying fox that's found in uh, like Southeast Asia, Philippines, and it has a wingspan of almost six feet. So, wow. Yeah. So that's it's, big. So bats are our friends. Yes, they yeah. are very much our friends. We've got... Um, there's a Yolo Basin uh, Causeway uh, not too far from where I live where we do the the bat walks in the summertime and uh, there's 250,000 bats that live under that causeway that rice farmer uh, there's uh, I think it's almost 2,000 acres that are uh, uh, farm you know, rice fields in that area mm. and the farmer doesn't have to use any insecticides or pesticides at all because there's it's an armyworm moth mm. that the bats eat and the armyworm caterpillar is what attacks rice crops uh -huh. and that's one of bats you know favorite insects so he has never seen any you know armyworm moths or caterpillars in all the years that he's been harvesting rice in those that area and he has several different fields throughout the central valley that he he grows rice in and uh this is the only one that he doesn't have to use any insecticides in and we credit the bats for that that is so cool and i i just want to welcome sherry and olive thank you for joining us you're free to Come on camera if you want. You don't have to. Um, we were talking about Bat Week. Today is really just kind of a Q&A session again. Um, so if you have any questions about the Let Animals Lead method of animal Reiki or animal Reiki or, you know, just animals in general, we'll certainly do our best to answer those. Feel free. You can just raise your hand. You can come on. You can put them in chat, whatever you want to do. Um, so Mary Lynn, do you have a question? Well, yes, I have a question about, uh, let animals lead method, but I have a question for Darlene. Hi, Darlene. Hi. Could you, um, please repeat two things for me about the bats? Um, how many did you say are within the United States? Uh, you said 14,000. Well, there's, uh, in the world, there's 1,435 different species of bats. 
So I'm not sure how many in the United States there are. 1,400? Yes, 1,435. Yeah. Oh, okay. And um, that species. They, yeah. That's what season? That species, not the number of bats. Oh, oh, species. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, and um, rabies, and what, what did you say about them? They don't carry rabies? They don't carry it. They're not like a carrier. They're not going to carry it and spread it around. They will actually die from it. They, if the bat contracts rabies, they will die usually within 10 to 14 days. Okay. So any bat that we take in to rescue, if we suspect is ill, we will quarantine it for 30 days just to make sure that it doesn't have rabies. And we are all, all of us that are uh, doing the rescue and rehab, we've all gotten our uh, rabies uh, pre-exposure vaccine. So, mm -hmm. so we're, we're good. And then that if we do get bitten by a bat that's suspected to have rabies, then we just have to go in and get a booster. Oh, okay. And if a, if a human gets bitten by a bat, we have to go in and get a vax, uh, get rabies shot? Yeah, yeah. Anytime if you've touched, if you've been bitten by a bat, you you'll have to report it to the health department, or if you go to the hospital and report it, and they'll report it to the health department. Uh, but you should never handle a bat barehanded ever. You know, mm -hmm. use gloves, pick up, use a towel, use a a dustpan or something to place it in a box. But you never want to touch it with your bare skin because the only way that you can contract rabies is through a bite, through saliva. You can't get rabies by touching their guano or, or just, even just touching a bat, you won't get rabies. You have to be bitten uh, if it, that bat has, does in fact have rabies. But again, so many, so few bats actually have rabies. It's, it's not, it, the news, the media make it all a big hype and it's not as prevalent as it's made out to be. Okay. Okay, that's uh, helpful, thank you. And the, before I get into the question, the reason I'm very curious about the bats is because I had a bad experience, bat, <laughs> not bad, a bat <laughs> experience when I was visiting my sister uh, a month ago and who lives in Maryland and um, she was telling uh, me the story about um, finding a bat in her uh, crawl space. Uh, it's not an attic, but it's a crawl space. And she got extremely freaked out and immediately uh, called uh, for a service person to come and investigate and see what. Okay, so the service person came out and said what um, he would do, which is just to build in tunnels so they could uh, leave freely with, and not, you know, not be hurt, but they could not come back in. Okay, so while I was there, I thought to myself, huh, let me uh, go and talk to them and, um, and offer Reiki and explain my sister and brother-in-law's uh, bless my brother-in-law, mom or sister, <laughs> of um, her uh, fear. Okay, so I got into the closet and, um, you know, and I started uh, talking to them and explaining who I was and talking to him or them or, and, um, and that, um, you know, I cherished and w was grateful for for what they do in uh, for our environment and um, and speaking of environment, uh, my sister is um, concerned about you being inside her house, and she would really like um, for you to leave and enjoy the environment that you so prefer. I think so. Anyway. Um, I, I, I just said uh, what was going to happen with the person, the man coming in and building these tunnels, which will be, you know, 
non-hazardous and will allow you to safely leave and that's it. So then I offered uh, Reiki just as a, a joyful um, gesture, kind gesture to do. Um, and it accepted. So the Reiki was flowing. And right after I, the, the Reiki ended and I was just standing there quietly, I got a message like this saying, we want to leave too. Just, just never before has that ever happened to me, never. And I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't, I didn't think of that. That didn't, I didn't make that thought. And I, I really believe it. it, it came from them. So I said, oh, thank you for telling me and I'll inform my sister. Okay. And have they left? Well, I, I called her um, soon after that. And uh, I mean, um, I called her once I got back to Vermont and because the weather had been so rainy there, um, he could not work. So they had to reschedule. And then when I spoke to her two weeks ago, it still hadn't been done because of the rain. So I'll, I, I'm due um, a, to call her this week and I will find out what's going on. So, but that, yeah. that's the reason for my, you know, in, interest, because I want to share with her that, you know, she, about that, the facts, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, you'll have to keep us updated. On I will. Thank you. That's but, kicking it out. <laughs> that was cool. And they don't. And like my question about right. let animals lead. Okay, yeah. I go to a shelter and um, I um, I move from room to room. So um, I'm in one room and I. Um, activate the lead animals lead the Reiki and it's flowing and and all and then it's time you know it's like 30 minutes or so 15 and I'm watching the animals and see um, mo most of them are so receptive it's it's lovely so um, okay then I leave my question is I leave there and then like in two minutes, I'm going to another room. Do I have to reactivate the Reiki each time I'm moving like quick, kind of quickly from area to area? Well, you know, we're a little bit different um, as far as the let animals lead method goes. We're not really we don't look at it as channeling energy or turning it on. You have gone inward, right? Yes, I and have gone inward. You've gone inward. You've created this space. So you are in this space and you're, you're inside you, you know, that allows this peace and calm to come forth and to create this space. So even though you move, it's just like when we do a walking meditation, right? We can do a walking meditation and be in that space. So you can consciously move to another room and still be in that space. So where you go, you know, you are creating this it's, space. It's going. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I do feel, I do feel the energy flowing from me and, and, and I get into very deep meditate deep meditative state right um so okay that's yeah. good and Thank just you. walk to the other room with intention and then go mm -hmm. ahead and sit down and go inward again into that deep state um absolutely and you know there's no space and time doesn't exist as far as what we do so even though you're in another room, it doesn't mean that all the animals aren't experiencing this. Yes, the mm -hmm. ones that are immediate, you're going to see their response. Um, but space, time really doesn't affect this. 
Mm -hmm. um, so all the animals will be experiencing that space and if that's your intention. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yes, thank you. That's it. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. That was a great question, Mary Lynn. Oh, thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have a question? Okay, Tiffany, do you want to try it? <laughs> She's having a little. Good. Okay, I'm going to try it. I, I promise I'll talk really fast. Okay. Um, I apologize that I buzzed. Um, so you guys were very helpful because I volunteer at a shelter, and the question was, um, they they had it. Uh, I wanted to keep offering the Reiki, yeah. um, the classes basically about um, self, it's like the self care for animal caregivers class uh, that I'm teaching to volunteers and staff. Okay. So I have been teaching that, but the volunteer coordinator said, hey, you know, it seems like you don't have a lot of interest. So maybe you should just uh, do some other things as a volunteer, like you could just meditate with the animals yourself and not teach the classes. So I got really good and great advice from you and Leah, uh, and I wrote up a little document and I met with the volunteer coordinator assistant and talked about the responses that I got back from the um, from the staff of volunteers that came to my classes as included on the Shelter Animal Reiki Association website, the um, uh, evaluations. Okay. And so I put some little quotes. There were great quotes. Like people did like the classes and the length was good and um, they got a lot out of it. And people said things like, um, I can't believe I can meditate with animals. Like this was a great class. I never thought of meditating with animals that it could help me. And they said they couldn't believe the amount of relaxation that they got from the breathing exercises during the class, things like that. So I wrote down all the quotes and my evaluation, like numbers averaged out. Um, and we, and I wrote down the benefits of meditation. Um, and I wrote my proposal, like basically like, this is what I wanna do. I wanna uh, like help you more. So I don't take up your time. I don't, you know, you don't have to spend any money um, on like paperwork or anything. I can print the paperwork, things like that. So the only issue is that I extended myself quite a bit because I like to volunteer, but I also work full time. I just adopted another cute little dog and I have three. Um, so even though I love to do these kind of things and I've taken classes in zoo pharma cognizy, like um, another shelter animal breaking association, association member has. Um, so I use essential oils with animals and some sound healing, and I do a lot of things like that. So I offered that in like a little sentence, like, hey, I could offer some other classes. Um, and that's the one thing that she really focused on. She's like, um, oh, yeah, like other classes would be great. Like, so even though, you know, we like this meditation thing, but um, it seems like people have some problems kind of maybe coming like showing up to for ongoing practice like the first class was great but people aren't showing up although we only literally had like two practice classes and one person showed up um so we talked we met for an hour it was good she came to the class herself a few months earlier um and so she said um, and I can also offer classes on um, Zoom. My job will let me use like Zoom or Teams to offer virtual class, like practice sessions. I think that would really help improve like attendance. Um, so that's kind of what we came away with. And she said like you, hey, I like your classes. Why don't you do a sound healing and a like essential oil class and write that up and get back to me. And after I got back home, I said to myself, oh my gosh, I tried to write things up. I don't even have time to like write up a class or I literally have like minutes in my day every day. Right. Um, so I, you know, I don't want to backpedal, but I also really do want to concentrate on the meditation because she said, oh, so people, um, maybe the staff, like um, maybe they should come to like essential oil classes first and then they could help them get calmer and then they could use essential oils and then meditate with the animals. And I said, so really you want to keep these things separate. Like as we've learned in the let animals lead method, 
Um, we, you know, the animals may not like the essential oils that the person puts on them. Um, if they are trying to stay calm, it's great, but the animal might, um, I've had it happen before that my own animal, and I didn't know why he was leaving. <laughs> um, but then I realized, like, I put a bunch of oils on myself, and he, he doesn't like those, so. Um, so I did explain that to her. I think I'm, number one, trying to offer too many things at the same time. And I really did say to her, like, I really would like to concentrate on meditation practices because it's with you all the time. You don't have to bring anything in from the outside. You don't have to pay for oils um, or have, like, equipment for sound healing. Um, I, you know, you have your breath with you all the time. And to go inward and practice meditation with the animals is something that people can do uh, at the shelter without other outside things too. Um, so <laughs> I guess I would just like maybe some advice as to how I can backpedal. Like how can I blip without sounding kind of like a jerk without, um, you know, saying that I really can't do those other things at this time. Like it's not feasible for me to do that. I guess. Um, you know, you could tell her that right now you have the meditation program in place. You're still creating these other programs and your schedule's really tight. So you're happy to offer them once you get them complete, but it will be down the road when you can offer the essential oil class or the sound healing class. I wouldn't say that you're you can't do it. But I would let her know, you know, this program, my meditation program is already put in place. I it's practiced. Um, you know, we know people respond to it and I'm still developing the other classes and I will continue to develop them. And I'd be happy to put them on when they are complete and ready because you don't want to put something on that isn't ready you know, for the animals. And that way they know that, yes, you're working on it, but your schedule right now is really tight. So that's what you can offer because it's already put together. Does anybody else have any ideas for her on how she might approach that? I think that would be a good way. It almost sounds like the the manager is a little hesitant about meditation and I find that I, in my personal experience, what I've found is people really, it is so simple. It is so passive that a lot of people just don't see how this could work, even if you take them through it, or they're not the kind of person that can quiet their mind. I mean, they really struggle with that, right? And we have a lot of people in, in our society that there's so much coming at us that it, it can be hard to quiet our minds but if you tell them oh okay it's it's so typical right this oil this oil will calm the pet oh okay i understand that this pill will calm somebody this pill will fix it this oil will fix it um you know the sound bowls would be cool just to go and do with the animals with them with the reiki that would be um because animals tend to love that kind of stuff. I have a student, that's what she does. She uses um, sound bowls with animals and, you know, some of the Reiki techniques, um, the meditation. So, you know, it might be something that you could just go do if you want. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's just something that a lot of people, they see meditation and it is hard to get people to come. I think all of us who teach, you know, we have that. How do we get people to come? Yes, I and I found that with a lot of places that I have taught. So I've had two training facilities where I would just go do animal Reiki meditation circles, like once a month on a Sunday. Um, and it would depend. So one training facility, I always had about six to seven people. And we would separate them because the trainer insisted and we'd put up X pins, but they weren't like, they were kind of confined, but they would be like in a corner. And so we just section off a corner and then put a blanket and the person and the dog would go behind that little wall that we put up. 
And that was so all the dogs weren't staring at each other because she said that's too, um, you know, that can cause aggression. So she wanted them to have their own little space. So that's what we did. And it worked wonderfully. And the people would sit in a chair back there and the dogs had plenty of room to move around. And um, by the end of it, everybody was always amazed because the dog was, you know, just crashed out at their feet. And that one went well. So there was another facility I went to and it was like a doggy daycare and it was a really small room. And I mean, really the most, we'd try to do four dogs and that was too many. It really was. And it wasn't as successful because one, the people coming there were, this was a doggy daycare and they would have events, right? For the people, they had to buy memberships and then they would have events. They would have, you know, if a ball game was on, they'd have a big party. They'd have um, music bingo. They'd have all these different events and people could come with their dogs. And it was a lot of fun, a lot of activity. The dogs would come and they were used to, oh, I'm here. I get to play. I get to run, you know, so it didn't go well there. I mean, the first couple classes went well, but after that, you know, and I just quit going because people stopped coming and I just knew it wasn't the environment for what I do um, because everybody was too hyped up. The owners were too hyped up. You know, they wanted to come have fun um, and the dogs were certainly hyped up. There was like one or two people that would come on a consistent basis that really got it. Um, so there are some people who aren't going to really understand. And it sounds like maybe the shelter manager is one of those where she sees something outside as being able to calm when really we know it's the breath, it's being present, it's the intention, it's all of that. Um, so I like the idea of going online and offering that to all the, the workers, just invite them on. You could do that. You could do a monthly meditation circle online, um, you know, and let all the volunteers and the staff know that they're welcome to come. And if you don't get a lot of people right away, it doesn't matter. You can just keep doing it. Um, and then, you know, just let the shelter manager know that you're really busy. You have this program. You're happy to do the meditation. And once once you're happy with how the program looks with the essential oils and the you know, sound bowls, then you would be happy to teach it, but it's going to be down the road. And I think that's a great way to approach it. That is, that's wonderful. Because I'm all like, oh my God, <laughs> how do I, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. So you have to let us know how it goes. I will. <laughs> um, I, I would like to tell Tiffany that, uh, sounds like you did a very good job with um promoting yourself with uh you did you did a brochure correct uh like a write-up oh no the um so i'm part of the shelter animal reiki association yeah um, and they had the packet for me like it is an amazing resource i have to say like they wrote up the packet i know is um and so I just have to teach from it. Um, and they even include the um, surveys to provide to the staff and volunteers at the end. That, um, yeah, and so it all works out really well. It's exactly, so I know exactly what, what I need to do. And other people then that teach this class teach it the same way. So it's consistent. It's a great class. Yeah. We we have such great resources through Sarah, you know, we're so lucky um, that we have all of that available to us. And it makes us a lot easier when we go to approach shelters um, because sometimes it can be a little difficult. You know, the shelters are busy. They're like, what do you, you know, you're taking up our time. And so to convince them, we have all that information that explains why this is so important. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so we're lucky we have that. How how do um how do we access that? I am a member. 
how would I access the pamphlets and that sort of thing? Um, you go, I believe it's you go into the member area. I don't think it's just for teachers, that class. I think any member can access that. There are some materials that just teachers can access. Um, but I think that one, any member um, that's trained and let animals lead can can access um, mm -hmm. and that's under resources resources okay. yeah. so check that out I'm pretty sure that's where it is okay yeah, yeah like I, said, I think that one the self-healing I think everybody can access that one I don't think you have to be a teacher yeah, you can get it if just being a member. There's so much information there. It's, it, I know for me, when I first logged into it, when I got my membership, it's like it was almost overwhelming because there was so much information there. And it just, I just kept going back to it, you know, over the course of a couple of days because, you know, I just didn't want to overload myself and thinking, oh my God, because then you overload yourself and then you kind of forget what's there. So if you just, you know, keep checking back over over time there it, there's so many resources there it's a great 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 source of information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you and um has has anyone taken the let animals lead level two class for um I took the teacher training from Kathleen years ago. Um, I haven't taken, I didn't take the individual classes. I teach the level two, but I haven't taken that. Oh, okay. Now I'm just wondering if anyone, if Darlene or Tiffany or Sherry took the level two yet. I didn't take the, any of those classes because I was already a Reiki practitioner uh, for human Reiki going in. So I've taken the animal Reiki for Reiki practitioners class, which is basically a, a, an accumulation you know, of, of all the classes. That's the one that Leah teaches. And so it's basically one and two put together for people who already have some Reiki experience. And it's a really good class, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. It's yeah. very, oh. I like it a lot. Well, if um, I have um, uh, uh, the um, Reiki master um, qualifications, and I also uh, have the training from the International Center uh, for Reiki training, uh, animal Reiki one and two. And so I'm asking, wondering if uh, level two of let animals lead would be more of what, uh, more of the same of what I learned uh, through the uh, ICRT center classes or uh, different? I think it's going to be different for you. I would really recommend taking the um, animal Reiki for Reiki practitioners from Leah. Oh, okay. Um, because that would make more sense. She can take you into like a little bit deeper because you have that Reiki experience and she makes sure you, you know, you clearly understand and and the difference between what is taught elsewhere and about the let animals lead method um and and she's just an excellent excellent teacher but mm -hmm. i think that would be the better class for you okay it takes into consideration that you have other reiki experience mm -hmm. well yes and the icrt's um Reiki, animal Reiki level one and two is a different approach yes. from the let animals lead, yeah. uh, which um, I've come to love and, you know, so I, uh, and utilize, um, but I, I do, I do add in from my Reiki experience. Experience. And you know, you are going to make your practice your own. 
What's important is that you understand the differences Mm -hmm. that, you know, and especially that you don't try to force it on an animal. That's very important. And, and you probably know that already. I can just tell because you are so intuitive. Um, But, you know, it's just like my one student who now, yes, she, she doesn't call what she does let animals lead. Um, She's aware that there's this form of meditation. She's done other human Reiki and now she's doing sound bowl. So she does meditations and sound bowl and she calls it Reiki and that's perfectly fine. You know, she's not mm-hmm. saying this is let animals lead Reiki. Um, she's kind of packaged something together that she offers and that's great, you know, because she combines other things that she knows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just important to know when we're teaching, when we're out there talking about let animals lead, that other stuff we don't include mm-hmm. when, you know, mm-hmm. we, that we keep that pure so people understand it. Mm-hmm. When you go out and you're making your own practice, and if you wanted to include sound bowls or if you wanted to include essential oils, you know, that's totally up to you. We just know that we don't call that the let animals lead method, that it's not part of it. Um, and be careful with that distinction. But I really think that the animal Reiki for Reiki practitioners is the best class for you. All right, okay. And how long does that uh, go That's for? online and yep. that's also eight weeks. Eight weeks. Yeah. And uh, Darlene, what is, uh, how long each class? How long is each class? It, it's an hour and 15 minutes each class. Okay. And it's typically, uh, we meet, uh, it's Wednesday uh, evenings from 5 to 6.15 California time. So uh, that's oh. Pacific time. So that would, and I know she also, there's also a morning session also that's like, I think 9 to 10.15 or so. I know there's usually an AM and a PM session okay. for the classes for people yeah. to accommodate people, you know, on in different time zones. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I wouldn't be uh, wanting to take the um, the five to six fifteen because it's way too late for me. Yeah. yeah, but the morning session, and I know that you yeah. know, even in uh, I think the the first class that I was in, there was a, a woman that was in Scotland, so that was kind of cool. So she, oh, was, yeah. So it was like four o'clock in the morning her time. So she <laughs> it was crazy, but she was there. So yeah. So, so you never know who will be there. And I know she's going to be putting her class schedule together. Probably won't be uh, this year because she's doing a class. Oh, kind yeah. Of yeah. Her classes. So then the holidays are going to hit and it'll be into next year before we start yes. advertising. 2023. But sure. it's something to think about. Yes. It's well worth it. Yeah. So any other questions? We had a couple people drop off. That's all right. Yeah. I guess I want to say too, like I, um, I like you took the teacher training class um, from Kathleen Prasad. I was really lucky like to take it. She came, I think it was the first and only time she came to the Midwest and it was horrible weather, which is why most people don't come to the Midwest. It was like May and um, I traveled from Wisconsin to Michigan, and it was like cold and rainy and horrible in May. Yeah. Um, but we, it was, and it was at a at a barn, um, and it was really just interesting and amazing. But I wish that I would have taken like that um, Leah's class because I took a lot of classes. I took the human Reiki classes all the way through teacher training, and I took various like chakra classes with animals and do this chakra and that and I thought I was just you know like at Kathleen's level she would teach me a few things and I'd be like good to go but it was mind-blowing like it's it's a whole different way of thinking about instead of um, like yes. doing I just even though I've taken had taken like years of classes before I really um, was blown away by her class and just um, her. Mm. I think you, oh, there you go. You're back. You, oh, you froze up a little bit. Yeah. 
Oh boy. He oh, heard you. Well, sorry. Anyway, it was amazing. Yeah. And you know, that's a good point. Um, you know, I've taken a lot of classes throughout, you know, I started, I don't know, 18 years ago with human Reiki. And so I took level one and two, and then a few years later, there was another teacher. So I'd take levels one and two again, because something was always missing for me and I didn't know what it was. And that continued on. I mean, I, I studied with three or four different teachers taking everything over again. I had three master classes, something was missing. Then I, you know, I knew I wanted to go for the animals. So I was taking color light therapy for animals. I went through a very a veterinary essential oils class from my vet. I took all her little workshops. Um, and it was really when I found this method, the let animals lead method, that the missing piece, you know, I found the missing piece. I made the connection with the animals. And it was the meditative part. It really was because the, the classes that I took did not put much focus on meditation. It was something you did, you channeled, you know, you did, you put your hands on, you were doing, and you're right. This is about being and becoming. And that is so powerful. And it made all the difference for me. And now it's like, I hate to even, you know, I don't even feel like I'm, I know the animals benefit from it, but it's so important that people do this. And I think there's so many benefits for people that mm -hmm. it's like, well, yeah, the animals benefit, but hey, what's really going to happen here is you're going to be transformed and you're going to find a whole new way of looking at the world. And um, so I think it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. It definitely mm -hmm. changed my whole Reiki practice too. Uh, you know, I had been trained, you know, I'd, I'd taken level one and level two Reiki, uh, a different format and uh it just, I don't know, it just felt like something was missing. It just, it's like, okay, this this is it. It just, I couldn't really, you know, get into a vibe, get into a routine with it until I took the uh, Animal Reiki for Reiki Practitioners class last, this time last year. And it was just an eye-opening experience. It just is like, okay, this is what I need. You know, this is what was missing. And, you know, the, the Reiki that I had been taught before, you know, it's like we kind of, you know, you know, probably talked like maybe 10 minutes on the precepts and, you know, because it was all about hands on healing. It was, you know, and you got to use a, you know, surrogate for distance Reiki and this mm -hmm. and that. And it was just, it just felt really weird to me. And once I learned the, the let animals lead method, it just totally changed how he, it, my perspective of human Reiki too. You know, it's like, you don't need, you know, a surrogate to do distance Reiki. You just, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, uh -huh. just be yourself and just, you know, it's, it, and it just, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to even explain just the whole enlightenment that happened and and then I took a my level three class over the summer and uh, human Reiki side, and it was from the Japanese origins uh, perspective, and it's just been a whole a whole new life changing experience for me. It's like that is with the lead animals lead and this other method of Reiki. I've just. Yeah it's it's the pieces that i was missing so it's just mm -hmm. been it's been really neat and that i don't need to beam reiki i don't need to send reiki you know, for humans too it's just it's re really exciting <laughs> as you can tell <laughs> mm -hmm. that's wonderful thank you darlene for sharing yeah. i appreciate that um does anybody else have any questions because i do want to ask you guys if there is a topic that you would like Leah and I to discuss next week, is there anything, um, would you like to go more in depth in the pre, and I'm just throwing ideas out there. So more in depth of the precepts, 
Um, would you like to discuss more um, how gratitude is a spiritual practice? Uh, you know, what would, is there any topic that you would like us to bring up and discuss? Because we're always looking for ideas. We run dry after a while. <laughs> I, uh, I'm interested in animal communication. Okay. I am not an animal communicator. You know what would be fun? And I don't know if we can make it happen. We can make it happen. I just don't know when is if we could get a communicator to come on and maybe do a little presentation for us. Taya Strong. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I know she's busy, but maybe we could get her or, you know, we could get somebody definitely. Would you be interested in stuff like that? If we could get some uh, special speakers to come in. Um, <clears throat> yeah. You know, maybe uh, we could get somebody to discuss essential oils with pets. Maybe we could have a trainer come in. I don't know. You know, there's just so much. Oh. Um, Kelly has arranged um, uh, a um, mm -mm, an essential oils um, e expert to um, present. I saw uh, that. Yeah, right, Sarah. So maybe, maybe she would mm -hmm. you know, for people who can't attend that <clears throat> uh, that presentation, right? Um, so you know, just different topics like that. You know, if you can think of anything, the communication, and you know, I know Leah's taken class. I've taken a class, but we don't probably know enough to speak on it. But we could get somebody mm -hmm. in that does I, another idea is um crystals crystals yeah. for animals particular needs you know maybe for uh relaxation to um decrease um aggression um promote just love and okay i'm writing them down so uh, think... that, yeah fear you know to maybe to address fear mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know a new animal or a rescue animal would have or a new animal that comes to a home absolutely what uh, were you saying I was going to say uh, something along the same line, just how to incorporate Reiki into when you do adopt a new pet and, Ooh. you know, just those first few weeks or mm. months, you know, just to help the animal, you know, settle, you know, mm -hmm. it could be a, an animal that has fear or that's scared or, right. or whatnot that you're just trying to help uh, calm those behaviors and work with training. I mean, I know that I used it a lot to, to help me and I hope that it helped Bodhi too these last couple months of having him here. But it's like, you know, it, there's times that he looks at me, it's like he's trying to communicate with me, but I don't know what he's saying. So it's like an animal communication class, I think would be helpful too, just because he, it's like he looks at me and he doesn't want to listen. He just gives me this cold stare and I don't know what it means. It's a really puzzling look that he gives me. It's like he, he wants me to understand, but I don't know what he's saying. And it's just, uh, I would just like to know what, what it is that he's trying to communicate. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I've never seen that look in a dog before, the look that he gives me. It's like, it's really bizarre. Have yeah. you asked him? Yeah, I've asked him, but... It, you're not, I'm not, get, getting, I'm not getting a response. So, and maybe he's trying to figure you out, you know, mm -hmm. because they, they watch us to try to figure yeah. it out. My little one, she does that and she's got big dark eyes and she'll just sit there and stare. And I know she's really smart. And 
I think she's just watching the whole situation and she gets, she's got me figured out, but that's what she did in the beginning too. And she just like. Well, and I think too, with him, my husband has a very deep booming voice and it's like, I think Bodhi gets scared when he talks at times, especially when he's talking on the phone, because he, his volume seems to go up when he's talking on the phone for whatever reason. It's like it goes up, you know, five levels when he's on the phone. So, and I think that just scares Bodhi because even last night he'd gotten a phone call. We were already in bed and he got a phone call uh, from his uh, ex-wife and it was I think it wasn't a calm situation but his voice was loud and Bodhi got scared he jumped up on the bed and was shaking and it's like you know so he yeah, could definitely you know, feel know with these rescue dogs you know what their background is and, and that type of thing so those are all great ideas thank you we will definitely look into that so we're at 1127 um, so if nobody has anything else, we'll go ahead and do a quick meditation, okay. just keep ourselves grounded and centered for the day. So get comfortable and I'm going to put a little music on this time. Oh yeah, maybe I better turn it way down because you know what? We're on Facebook and YouTube, and I probably can't do that. So, okay, I won't put any music on. So get comfortable. Close your eyes and just start by taking a couple of deep breaths in and out. And on the exhale, just release any tension that you may be feeling today. And now as you breathe in, pull your breath all the way down to your belly, to that hara. And inside that hara, visualize the beautiful bright light of the universe that resides there. And this breath ignites it like a blowing on a fire. And then as you exhale, you're releasing anything that's not serving you. So go ahead and take a breath in, pull it all the way down to the belly, really fan and ignite that beautiful light that's inside you. And exhale whatever's not serving you. Now take another breath in, pull it all the way down to the belly, ignite this beautiful light. And this time this light grows so bright and large that it travels up your body, illuminating every cell, goes out through your skin and your hands into the space around you. Take another breath in, breathing in, pull it all the way down, ignite that light and just feel it grow all over your body and expand outward into the room around you and back to the universe. Breathe in, pull it down, ignite the light, it grows large and you expand it out to the universe on your exhale. Take another breath in, pull it down to the hara and exhale this beautiful light back out. Take a couple more breaths like that on your own. Now just let your breath find a natural rhythm. and put your focus on your heart center. And see this heart center just full of this light that has filled your body. 
And it's so full that it just can't hold any more light. And it opens like a flower blooms gently. And this light extends outward from your heart. Now bring to mind an animal that you would like to share this with. And invite them into this space. Invite them to step into this light and let them know whatever they decide to do is perfectly fine. And just hold that space for them. And repeat to yourself that all is well. All is well. All is well. Hold that space. And now go ahead and bring your hands in casa. Give thanks to whoever joined you. However they participated is perfectly fine. Take a deep cleansing breath, pulling it all the way down to the hara, allowing this breath to bring you back into your body, into this present reality your physical form. And then when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. All right. So thank you, ladies. It was wonderful to have you here. You gave us some great mm -hmm. ideas for topics. So we'll see what we can do with that. Um, and everybody have a great week. Great weekend. You too. All right. You too. Thank you. Thank uh -huh. you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Marilyn. Bye, Tiffany. Bye. Bye. Hopefully it feels better. Yes. Bye.